are in Bethesda, Maryland. We, I say, because Jerry is with me. I am waiting for the shuttle to go into NIH, the National Institutes of Health. I am a research participant. And these birds are freaking out. It's time for morning update. It took 35 minutes to go through security and go through the COVID check to get onto the NIH campus, but it was really quick getting to OP5 where my appointment was for my, well, where they told me my appointment was for my COVID test. When I got here, they take my vitals. There were no orders. So they were able to contact someone and get me orders, and it was the intrusive COVID test. You stuck it way up my nose and turned it. Oh my gosh, my eyes are still watering. But that is all I have today at NIH. So now I've just got to catch the shuttle and get back to the hotel. They also checked on all my other orders and made sure that they were put in. So I do have my CAT scan and my two MRIs and all of those things. Oh, two things. There were slides going by on their screensavers on their computers that include pictures of Dr. Fauci here at Building 10. And the phone rang and my heart jumped. It was the exact same ringtone as I had on my desk phone. So the phone had the exact same ringtone as my desk phone in my office at my job. I have not heard it since April 2nd, but my heart jumped. The nurse called it post-traumatic stress disorder. I think it was. It was like, <gasps> Main floor, nine. I am a research participant at NIH. Let's talk about what that means. National Institutes of Health, they do research on healthy people and they do re research on sick people. I have a disease called von Hippel-Lindau and it causes tumors to grow in different parts of my body. They tend to grow more slowly than they do in the general population. NIH has decided that they will research tumor growth in folks with my illness because it gives them the opportunity to try different things, surgeries, trial medications, and see how my body reacts and over the years figure out strategies to continue to help people beyond my disease who have tumors for other reasons. The National Institutes of Health do not charge for those services. So for me, it means annual scans. Every year I can get my MRIs and my CT and my blood work free of charge. However, my clinical trial is in Bethesda, Maryland and I live in Seattle. The government buys me an airplane ticket to get here and they reimburse me a lot of the cost of my hotel and $30 a day for food. They provide a shuttle, but if I miss the shuttle or the shuttle doesn't run at the time I need, I have to just watching to make sure my ride doesn't please. Oh no. Anybody can be part of a clinical trial. It can be a sick person, a healthy person. My disease, since it's rare, has qualified me to be in, well, I'm in four and a half this time. So my disease affects different parts of the body, and so I'm in a different trial for each body part. If you're a doctor, you might think of it as by specialty, right? So I am seen by a different clinic for each issue. On this trip, I'm going to be seen by the eye clinic. They're gonna go in and look in my eyes and take all the pictures and let me know, usually if I need laser surgery. That's what they'll tell me. It just depends on if I have a clump of veins growing in my retina that need to be lasered. I've had that done once. Not here at NIH, but at home. Number two, they're gonna check my ears. I once had a tumor in this ear that could cause my face to droop. It could cause vertigo, or it could cause me to suddenly lose my hearing in that ear, and I had that tumor removed at NIH. They found the tumor, and they operated and removed that tumor. My hearing and everything's fine now, but 
I do have two ears, so I could get a tumor in this ear or it could grow back in that ear, so they're following me and will let me know how I'm doing. I'm also being seen by the brain trial, and that's the main natural history trial men. They're the ones who pay for my airplane ticket and such. They are going to give me an MRI of my entire brain and spine at home. That's usually in at least two appointments. It takes about four and a half hours at least. We'll see, sometimes it's a little quicker at NIH. They use a really powerful machine, but they are gonna be scanning me in the MRI machine to see how my brain and spine are doing. Last time we checked, I have tumors all up and down my spine, and I have tumors all in my brain. Those are hemangioblastomas. They're tumors made from blood vessels, and I have dozens of those. Because the von Hippel-Lindau is in my genes, it just keeps coming. Those tumors aren't considered technically a cancer because they are just made from blood vessels. Oh, and they're not gonna spread to anywhere else. But in the fact that you have a place where tumors are growing over and over again and sometimes have to be surgically removed, that is sort of like cancer. I do have cancer and they are going to be checking on one aspect of it. I'm going to have an MRI of my abdomen while I'm here. And for that MRI, that is going over to the urology study who studies my kidneys and I do have tumors. I've had them removed out of my kidneys. I'm gonna see if I need to have any removed again. Look and see, there's a threshold. Two and a half centimeters is okay, three is bad. I, of course, I'm being followed by a doctor at home and I kind of know where I'm at, but it'll be good to get that set of MRIs for free. They're not gonna have time to see me in clinic while I'm here in the kidney study, so they're gonna have an appointment with me on telehealth back when I get home. The only part of my body that's not being studied that should be here at NIH is my pancreas. Something happened with the pancreas study, they don't have funding for natural history, so if something happens with my pancreas monitoring at home, I can send a copy of those scans here and they can decide if they're gonna operate or if they suggest a surgery at NIH, and I can possibly have it done there. I don't know why I would fly out for pancreas surgery, but you don't know what's the most cutting edge and what they're gonna offer you at each hospital. So I'm kinda on my own about that pancreas, but I think you'll be able to see it on the abdominal MRI I'm getting, and so I'm planning on bringing that MRI back home to my pancreas doctor. So the only thing I forgot is about my brain. So I've already had brain surgery twice, plus I had a complication that involved putting a shunt in my head that is now ligated, that was yet another surgery. While we are here, I'm gonna be very interested to see what the doctors say about one of my brain tumors. It's a midline brain tumor. It's a midline right in the back of my head. They are looking at that one closely. Two years ago when I was here, they said, you definitely need surgery. I went home. If you watched the previous video, you'll see that my doctor at home said, no, you don't need surgery. And it's two years later, my surgeon at home last year said I was okay so let's see what the surgeon here says this year. As many tumors as I have have doctors with different opinions and that's just part of it. That's just part of being a patient with a rare disease. It's complex and it's a lot to keep after. What would I say about being a patient at NIH? Well just know that everything is siloed. Everything is completely siloed. One department does not talk to another. In fact they get beefs against each other and communicate at all. It's expensive because I brought my husband with me. They didn't pay for his airplane ticket. They're not paying for his meals. I don't need him technically because I'm not, you know, in a wheelchair or on a walker. Of course, emotionally I need him here and because of the popular disease, he won't be in any of my appointments. So that's going to make that super interesting. The customer service here used to be really good. They kind of rolled out the red carpet for us as research participants. They don't anymore. Funding's gone down. Maybe morale has gone down, but they just don't anymore. When you get there, you're kind of on your own to figure things out. There's a hospitality desk, but they're busy, and you're just kind of roughing it. So things go differently. Like you saw this morning, I got there, and the orders weren't even put in for my popular disease test that I had to have when I first got there. Why weren't the orders put in? You deal with this at your doctor's office. If you go and you do all your appointments in four days, which is what I'm doing, then you get all of those missteps just right in a row. Even little things. The nurse today took me back to take my vitals, forgot to take my vitals, and had to bring me back to take my vitals. One thing that I really like with some of my doctors at home is they'll make an effort to keep me comfortable. When I got my endoscopy, like they are just making sure that I'm comfortable. No one at NIH makes sure you're comfortable. <laughs> they make sure they get their research. They make sure that their paper's funded. They make sure 
that those things get checked off. But really here, I am not in a hospital. And they're not there to treat anything outside of my Von Hippel Lindau, nothing. I've had blood work come back bad that I had anemia at NIH. They never told me because I'm not an anemia study. So why would they mention it? The patient is on their own to figure out anything else that's going on with their body like my stomach aches that's outside of the scope of the studies that I'm having, right? Are my stomach aches caused by the von hippel lindau Well, certainly taking medications all day for several years could impact your stomach. Taking antibiotics lots of times could impact your stomach. Is it as a result of VHL? Probably indirectly, yes. Are my headaches a result of VHL? Absolutely. Have surgery on your foot five times and figure out how your foot's gonna feel. My brain has had surgery on it so many times that all of these nerves have been damaged and the pain just doesn't stop. I just have it around the clock. Are they gonna treat that at NIH? No, no, they're gonna look and see if I need surgery and give me surgery. Do I need experimental medication? They'll do that. They've got a, one very promising medicine now. I'm gonna look into it. It's available in Seattle, but it is in clinical trials. A lot of people, since the popular disease, have been really worried about being guinea pigs for the government. <laughs> I've been coming to NIH for 18 years. It used to come every six months. They changed it to once a year, but it used to be every six months. I am almost literally a guinea pig for the government. <laughs> like, that's my job. Like, as a patient, taking care of my health, I'm seeing the best doctors in the world. They come here to do the research. They're absolutely the best, but I am a little lower than a mouse. <laughs> because when you do a mouse study, you probably treat the mice better. One time I was on the elevator and there was a woman with a plastic shoe box full of mice. I'm a lab rat. It just puts you in your place, let me tell you. <laughs> no one thinks about if I have time for meals. No one thinks if I'm thirsty. Nobody worries about any of that. And without my husband with me, it's gonna be all on me. So I'm gonna have to make sure I make time for my self care. Like this morning, I ended up getting something to eat. There was no produce because of the popular disease. So now I'm gonna figure out how I'm gonna acquire any produce. They had a salad machine. I don't even know how to explain to you a vending machine that produces salad, not prepackaged salads to your order. I don't know if I can get any, any footage of it. I might be able to go in and get a picture. Technically, not supposed to be shooting any of NIH. It's a federal facility and there are security risks involved. So that's why you'll see mostly just me, tiny little snapshots because I really can't risk the facility. And I'll try to record some of my appointments so you can hear what the doctors say. It's a lot easier than me trying to remember what they said and it gives me something to bring back to Jerry who can't come into the appointment. So, would I recommend a person be a research participant at the National Institutes of Health? Absolutely. Would I call it a walk in the park? No. NIH is a place of contradictions. When I had my ear surgery, I had the best recovery nursing care that I've had in my life. Top of the heat. A number one, itchy bond. The best care you could ask for from nurses. However, when I was in the ICU, my nurse literally put a blanket over her head and went to sleep. Same hospital, same facility, same surgery. And I ate a lot of contradictions. When we go tomorrow, I will film what I can and let you know what happens. It's almost a game to me now to see what goes wrong and to try to keep a positive attitude. I'm not always successful. I felt like flipping off some cameras on my way out of the building before. I didn't do it. I'm not ungrateful. This is a lot of free medical observation. This is the stuff that keeps me alive. I am not ungrateful, but I'm not going to sugarcoat it and tell you that this is easy. I'm nervous. I have to get a blood draw and an IV placement tomorrow. It has gone so poorly in the past. The nurse that did my blood draw told me that I had no blood. How can you have no blood? That's not a thing. We are beginning our adventure together. Just you and me. Jerry back here at this hotel. Can you believe this balcony? This is crazy. Look at this place. We are truly in the heart of the city. And I could never afford this. This is because of the popular sickness. Nobody's in the hotel. I got the upgrade for $10. <laughs> this is not in my budget. Stay tuned. I will let you know how the rest of the trip goes and what they say. But remember, it's not the final word. I still have my doctors at home. So 
we do our best, you know? I used to joke. I know how I was doing if I had an MRI machine in my garage and someone said, are you gonna get one? Well, they cost a million dollars and they're a giant magnet that would pull every metal thing out of the garage into the MRI machine. Oh, and you wouldn't be able to park the car. No, I'm not getting an MRI machine. <laughs> my therapist once said, you know, people don't know how medical stuff works. I'm realizing that. Maybe 18 years coming here has put me in a position where I kind of know how medical stuff works. Just this much. Just enough to be dangerous, as they would say. Anyway, I'll let you know if I see Dr. Fauci. <laughs> if you want to get another update on my medical, watch this video. And here's a video down below that YouTube picked out just for you.